Hi everyone, and I hope your week is going well. Sometimes, different people listen to the same thing and have totally different responses, depending on how they see themselves in that context. So, for example, in recent messages about the, the rule of six, where there were rec restrictions on social gatherings, some people will have seen themselves as complying with everything that the government has asked us to do, and pleased that those who have been breaking the guidelines are being restricted. Others will have heard what was said and, and realised that their behaviour had been inappropriate and will have decided to change. Others will have heard it and thought it applied to someone else. Others will have heard it and been outraged at the restriction of personal freedom and liberty. And we might well have different reactions depending on how we're feeling and what we were hoping to do. And I think something very similar would have happened as Paul's letter was read out to the church at Ephesus. But in this context, there were just two groups of people, the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews were the ethnic descendants of Abraham, a nation that had been established by God and been promised a special, unique position and many, many blessings. The Gentiles were quite simply those who were not Jews, those who were outside of God's promises, outside of God's blessing. And we think that the church at Ephesus would have been made up of people from both of these groups. And as these words were read, I expect they would have heard Paul speaking to them directly. Those who were ethnically not Jews, the Gentiles, would have been reminded about how in their natural state they were outside of God's blessing. They were excluded. They were aliens. They had no hope. They had no relationship with God. Those who were ethnically Jews would have been reminded of the blessing they had been born into, the promises that were theirs, the hope they lived under. But they might also have been challenged about the way that they had thought about those who were outside, those they referred to as uncircumcised. Many of us don't, probably don't appreciate the depth of the tension that existed between these two groups. Yes, God had called the Jews to himself. He had called them to be separate, but they were also to be a blessing to the rest of the world, to show what living as God's people could be like, to encourage others to come into a relationship with God. But they seem to have forgotten that part and had developed deep-rooted hostility towards outsiders. And this was partly understandable, as for hundreds of years they'd been under foreign rule, They'd been mistreated. They had come close to national extinction. It's no wonder that they became insular and very protective of themselves. One of the most shocking examples of this that I've come across was where it was against the law for a Jew to help a Gentile woman to give birth as she was bringing another heathen into the world. This hostility was real. It was exclusive and excluding. It was always there. And this was the context behind what Paul was saying. And all his listeners would have been fully aware of it. They would have lived it. They would have experienced it. As they listened, what would they have been thinking? Were the Gentiles wondering what Paul was going to ask them to do so they could fit in with the Jews? Were the Jews expecting to be congratulated? or criticised for their previous behaviour towards the Gentiles. But neither of those is Paul's focus. Rather, he points them to the transforming difference made possible through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. That changed everything. And it made it possible for those who had been a long way away to be drawn close. This was life-changing transformation. Society changing transformation, world changing transformation. They could worship God together, they could serve God together, they could eat together, they could happily be in the same room together, they could demonstrate what it was for people who had been diametrically opposed to each other to live in unity together. All of these things had been unthinkable before entering into what Jesus had done for them. And it is not that Jesus has made it possible for Gentiles to become Jews. 
But he's broken down. He's destroyed the very real barrier between them. And then what he has done is to bring both groups of people together and make them into one new humanity. We get this in chapter 3, verse 15. What some people refer to as a third race of people. As he did so, he made peace between them. He reconciled both groups of people to God. The Jews would have mistakenly thought that they were okay. The Gentiles would have thought there was no way in which they could enter into God's blessing. But the cross of Jesus proves them both wrong. They each needed to be reconciled. They each needed to be drawn back into a relationship with God. And the cross makes it possible. Jesus got rid of their hostility. He gave them both access to God through the Spirit. And the consequences of this for the Gentiles was that they were no longer aliens and strangers, but they were now members of God's people. And the implications for the Jews is they had to leave behind any idea that they had a superior claim on God. They were all equal in Christ. And as well as being equal, they were joined together into one body. They were united together. Anything that affected one would affect the other. As Paul says to the church at Corinth, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. And as they experienced that, as they entered into a deep relationship with God because of Jesus, so the barriers and the hostility and the disagreements between them disappeared as they realised they were all there on the same basis. And this basis was nothing about their own ethnicity, their own achievements, their own holiness. It was all about what Jesus and what he had done for them. And the fact that Jesus was able to break down this barrier, that barrier that caused such, such hostility between these two groups of people, tells us that there are no barriers beyond his reach that he cannot tear down. For many of us, I don't think the issue today is whether people are Jews or Gentiles. But we may have other boundary divisions, other tribes that are very real and important to us. For some, it's a question of race. But whether we want to recognise it or not, we see those of different race as less than us or different from us. And this has been something we've been thinking about recently. Heather helpfully drew our attention to this passage in in one of our Thursday evening discussions about race and spoke about the liberating things it has to say about dealing with racism. It might be, the barrier might be to do with social standing, where we fit economically and where we maybe look down on those who have less and particularly those who may seem to be not seeking to contribute. It might be to do with gender and the relationships people have. It is important that we know what we believe, although we do need to allow our beliefs to be challenged and shaped by our understanding of God as revealed in the Bible and supremely in the person of Jesus. So do we need to hear again the words and the challenge of Paul? Not any longer in, just in the context of Jews and Gentiles, but in the context of our own tribal beliefs, whatever they may be. To be reminded that the only basis for any of us to be welcomed into God's presence is through the work and person and sacrifice of Jesus. Nothing to do with who we are, what we support and so on. To be reminded that Jesus is, is in the business of breaking down barriers, of healing wounds, of, bring, of bringing peace, of building up. To be reminded that Jesus was prepared to die in agony and shame to draw people without distinction, to himself. To be reminded that it is through him and through his spirit that people come together and gain access to God. To be reminded that because of the work of Jesus, we no longer exist as strangers and enemies, but we come together with all our differences as the common people of God. And I think it even goes a bit further than that. It's not just about us as individuals being prepared to find our common standing with every other believer in Christ. But there is a recognition that if Jesus is in the ongoing business of peace and re reconciliation, then we should be as well. 
when we see injustices, when we see unhelpful barriers being erected, when we see things being put in the way of others that would prevent them becoming the people that God wants them to be, what is our response? For Jesus, his response was to come and to totally give himself so that the barriers that existed between people and people and between people and God could be demolished. As followers of Jesus, surely we are called to emulate that in our own lives and in our own context. What injustices are we aware of? What do we see going on around us that we believe would offend the heart of God? That would try to build up again the barriers that Jesus came to destroy? Racial issues are the obvious example and something that desperately needs to be addressed. But there are others. When we see them, when we become aware of them, are we prepared to join in with the work of Jesus and in his power and in his strength, commit ourselves to trying to bring those barriers down and to make peace and reconciliation possible and real in people's lives? We may all be aware of some of those barriers. There may be specific things in our individual circumstances that only we may be aware of. Some barriers that we have towards others, perhaps. How are we going to respond to that? What are we going to do to make a difference? Or maybe we see injustice being carried out by somebody to somebody else, and we alone have an opportunity to do something about that. What are we going to do? Are we going to recognise the unity Christ calls us into? Are we going to live in the reality of that? Are we going to seek to extend this to everyone else? And the challenge can seem daunting. It can seem too big for us. But the barrier that existed between Jews and Gentiles was huge. People thought it could never be broken down. People thought it should never be broken down. Jesus came and broke that barrier. There is no barrier that he cannot destroy. I'll be prepared to be part of that and join in the work that he is doing. Here's some questions to think about. All believers are united in Christ. What should this mean in practice? Jesus is our peace. He made peace. He preached peace. How can we follow his example? What barriers do you think Christ is breaking down today? How can you be involved in that work? May God bless us as we seek to live in the reality of what Christ has done and follow his example.